What is up guys, your boy Gansu and welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make your own 808s. I'm gonna give you the sauce and it's really easy actually. Before we jump into the video, I just wanted to plug my Twitch. I started streaming on Twitch quite regularly and if you wanna hang out with me and watch me make beats and maybe even some sample challenges or beat battles, you have the link in the description. But anyways, as I said, I'm gonna show you guys how to make your own 808s and I'm gonna show you guys two ways of doing this. The first way is gonna be with a sound generator such as 3x oscillator or serum and the second method is with your voice. That's right, you can make 808s out of your own voice. Now, you don't need the best microphone. I'm gonna be using both my Shure SM7B and this old iPhone 6S that I still have to show you that it works on both. This is a five-year-old phone or six at this point, so I suppose pretty much every phone should do. That's somewhat recent. But we're gonna start with the sound generators. I'm gonna show you both 3X Oscillator and Serum, and it's really easy, as I said. First of all, to actually make the 808 punchy, you wanna do this in an empty project, as in no soft clipper and no limiter because we kind of want to have the 808s hitting so no hard clipping at zero meaning it's probably gonna go over zero db but that's gonna allow us to have hard hitting sounds even in a new project so i'm gonna start with 3x oscillator and then serum so in this case we have this awful sound at first but if we tweak some things like this and all i did was basically just turn down the second and the third oscillator so that way we only have the first one set to the normal wave and then just take the course i guess knob all the way down just basically pitching it down to octaves and now by pressing z which is the c4 button on the key midi keyboard thing we have this really boomy bass so this is going to be the foundation for our 808 so i'm just going to put this on a random master track and we're just gonna put it on c4 because we want to have the 808s on c so that way it's going to be easier to tune them later so let's make this i don't know two bars long it's not going to be that long but still plenty of 808 to work with we're going to put the thing in the timeline we're going to make the selection and we're going to be pressing Control, alt and c this way we're going to be consolidating the audio so it's basically rendering the audio into the project now we can just get rid of this ungroup this and now we have the base basically so we're gonna start off by creating a volume automation copying the first value or, or rather the value of the first point and then let's just maybe drag this down and add a point like this hold shift when you move it left right that way it's gonna keep the same value and let's just play with the fade as i said this might be too long so in this case we won't even need this point we can just you know shorten the automation something like this this feels like a good length for an 808 we can get rid of the remainder like this and now the fun part the distortion to actually make it sound like an 808 like a standard 808 i guess we're gonna be linking this to let's say the first track and this is where your own way comes into play you can use whatever distortion plugin you want nani which is what i'm gonna be using you can use any vsd that distorts you could probably even use wave shaper or i don't know any saturation plugin it really doesn't matter as long as you're distorting the sound so as I said, we're going to be adding Nani because that's what I actually use for my distortion. If you're using Nani, just untick this auto button so it won't adjust the volume as you do this. We'd rather have full control on this. We're just going to increase the drive and we're going to keep on listening to this until it sounds like what we want. And even so, it might be too high pitch so we can actually turn it down one more octave and see how it sounds like. I'm just gonna increase the sample start. Well, apparently it doesn't get rid of that click in the beginning, but no worries, we can, as I said, copy the value of the first point. Let's change the magnet tool to maybe one fourth and add a point, I guess like this, and turn this one all the way down with a slight, you know? But that's still, that's not a problem. You can just ignore this completely. You can always reconsolidate this because we're still going to need to render it and then just chop the uh, the clickiness in the, in the beginning. So let's keep it that way. It's going to annoy us now, but still, let's just keep it that way. Okay, this is fine. Let's EQ it and see how we can balance it out. So it's not too high end, still bassy, not too much mids. Let's make sure that it's not actually muddy and you know make sure it sounds good i'm gonna start off by doing a low cut i mean it's gonna be bassy either ways but still let's kind of control it a little bit you can even apply this eq right before the distortion so maybe yeah 
you know it already sounds way better yeah i guess this is the way <laughs> and then we can add another eq after the distortion to once again control it fully like get rid of those not good frequencies Although I wouldn't spend too much time EQing it right now because the actual mixing of the 808 is gonna come in when we're actually making a beat with this 808. But you know, just getting the idea down and making sure that it, it sounds ready to use, I guess. So you just have to constantly play with this until you're actually, you know, satisfied with it and know that it's something that you're gonna be using. You can even add some chorus on it to give it a little bit of a stereo. What I like to do is just increase the stereo field all the way up and then just decrease the mix level in the mixer effects. And let's add one more EQ just for safety and decrease some of the mids, maybe the bass mids, low mids, and one more low cut. So this is a really bassy 808. It doesn't have that many frequencies when it comes to the mid highs. So we can go back into the actual first one and let's see if we can bring up some of those frequencies. You know what? This is fine. So as I said, we're going to be selecting this once again, control alt C to consolidate it. And now we're going to ungroup this so we can either mute them or just straight up delete them. We won't be needing them anymore since we already made the 808. So now we have this. This is the consolidated 808. And as you can see, it has the... Uh, the weird part in the beginning maybe if you can chop it up a bit we kind of got rid of it but i feel like the more we chop well never mind i thought the click was still gonna be here but apparently it isn't and what you can do uh i don't really like to do this but what you could do is uh add the kick in the beginning kind of mix them together blend them together so that way you get the 808 with kick effect so like just getting any softer kicks I don't know, something like this. And you can actually just make a fake sidechain by just adding a volume automation. That's a panning automation. Adding a volume automation and ducking the volume ever so slightly while the kick hits. You can once again do this in one fourth of a step so it's quite accurate or precise. So something like... You know, something like this, changing the pitch of the uh, kick to match the 808. So, yeah. You can do this and that's it that's basically it with the uh, 3x oscillator now for serum it's basically the same technique i don't even think it's worth showing it basically the same thing just more bassy and that's it this is how you make 808s from sound generators this applies for massive for basically anything that could generate sine waves now the fun part how do you actually make 808s out of your own mouth you can basically just use your mouth if you're lucky enough to have a lower voice this is gonna be easier but you can still do it with a normal voice normal all you have to do is just do a hum low enough hum that if you pitch down becomes bassy so ooh, that could work doesn't even matter you just basically all you have to do is hold one pitch try to, to be constant about it also the volume changes as well they're gonna be really noticeable so if you go ooh, ooh, that's gonna sound really interesting not too good but i'm gonna do this on both the iphone and on my actual microphone and i'm gonna be recording these at the same time so it's the exact same sound so there's no variation between the actual sound produced by my by my voice so i'm gonna pull up edison real quick and i'm gonna be recording the same thing on the iphone so both are recording and that's it if you do this for a longer amount of time you could probably find the spot like this where it's kind of you know like a straight line not too much variation so this is probably the part that i'm going to be using so let me just copy the audio from my phone to my pc so there we go we have both the mic audio and the phone audio well both are microphones but still so what we're going to do is try to align these as close as possible and get the exact same chop so we can do them exactly the same and see the actual difference between the mic and the phone it's mic Okay, so it's gonna start here probably and end somewhere here because I can kind of hear a, a difference coming in. So like, you could kind of hear me running out of breath. So I guess this would be the sweet spot, something like this. So let's get these two regions and uh, delete the rest because that's all we need. Also, these might be shorter 808s, but still, 
it awaits nonetheless. So we're going to process both of these the exact same way. First of all, I'm going to be consolidating this just so we have them actually rendered and not work with the entire audio clip. So there's not that much difference in the sound between the two. So I'm just going to name them to be easier to see. So SM7B and then iPhone. If you listen closely and not even that closely, you can you can hear that both share the same ish low frequencies, but this one has a higher frequency boost to it. Actually, never mind. This one seems like it's lacking a bit of a low frequency, but no problem. Since we're going to be pitching them down, they're going to appear. So let's normalize both of these and let's just pitch them down one octave. And now they already started to sound rumbly, which is a good sign that it's slowly going to be turning into an 808. We're going to be using a free plugin, which is G-Tune. It's basically a guitar tuning, you know, plugin. It's a real time tuner. That's all it does. And it's free once again. So we're going to link these to the same mixer track and I'm just going to add G-Tune. So if I play the 808 now, it's exactly on F sharp. So if I put it on F sharp, we have a C. So as I said, we're going to be linking them to the same mixer track. And from here, it's kind of the same process. We're going to start with an EQ to get rid of some of those high frequencies and kind of balance the low frequencies. We can even boost them a bit since, you know, it's still a voice and not an actual sine wave that's super strong. You hear it? There's basically an 808 in here and you could probably not be able to tell that it was made out of a hum. So I'm going to keep the high frequencies for now. After the distortion, we'll see how, how that affects them. Maybe I'll actually get rid of them completely. We'll see. So once again, the distortion, same thing as before, just use whatever you're comfortable with. And going back to the EQ, I kind of got the sound that I wanted. Let's actually uh, decrease the high frequencies and see how it affects it. So I kind of like the the growliness that comes from the uh, original sound. And even if I remove the high frequencies, if you listen to the distortion, it still creates that high sound. So this is the normal EQ. And then this is the high cut. You know, so I might as well just keep these here for some harmonics, I guess. And now, once again, another EQ to calm down the distortion, I guess, just to balance it out. So this is super bassy, but once again, I'd rather have a super bassy 808 now and be able to get rid of some of these frequencies when I'm actually making the beat, instead of having a weak 808 that you couldn't really add bass to it. I mean, you could, but it's not going to be the same. But okay, let's say this is fine, right? I'm still going to add some chorus, just to add some stereo to it so it's less boring, I guess. Not too much because we don't want it to, to be phasing, but still just some, some amount. Now, let's see how it sounds like with the SM7B, since it's the same sound, basically. Let's see how it affects it, if there's that much of a difference. Somehow, it's less bassy. The actual good mic is less bassy than the iPhone mic. I bet this is the first time you see an SM7B without the pop filter, but still huge capsule, tiny, tiny, tiny hole microphone. So to actually make the SM7B sound bass here, we still have to boost. We have to boost the bass even more. Although I like how the iPhone sounds better. So I'm just, just going to ignore the SM7 for now and just keep working on the iPhone sound. But okay, now it's actually time to make it into an 808 that slightly goes down in volume. You know how it is. So we're going to be adding a volume automation and it's the same thing. Just add another point right at the end, chop the automation and ever so slightly decrease the volume, make it into a fade. But what if we decrease the octave even more? It's too slow, so we're not going to do that. <laughs> so the only thing is this is kind of a short 808. I mean, it's not a short 808 like a plug 808 but it's shorter so you can try to hum for longer so you have the consistency of the volume but still 808 made out of a human voice with a cheap microphone technically that you already have in your phone i'm impressed not gonna lie so i'm just gonna consolidate this and there you have it you have another 808 recorded with your phone so in conclusion it's not hard to make 808s like the general idea of an 808. It wouldn't be technically an 808 because it doesn't come from a 808 machine, but everyone calls them 808s. Their bases, 808 sounds better than 
base, plug base. Reese base sounds nice though. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please do the thing where you leave a like and you comment and subscribe and whatnot. Also, as I said, I'm going to be streaming on Twitch. So if you guys want to follow me and, you know, get a notification that I'm live and want to hang out and I still have a 50% discount on my drum kits. If you don't want to bother making 808s, you can just buy them and other stuff. And you still have time until this Friday to get everything at 50% off, including the new drum kit. But yeah, it was your boy Gun, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.